because we now achieved the required lux level, we can now proceed with the calculation surface showing the pseudo color and the lux value. So let's close this one now. And then go to the calculation objects. Press this one. Okay, go back to the um, construction. And then select the assessment zone. Now you can see that the assessment zone, it means that the, the green side, this is where the whole calculation surface, uh, calculation, lighting calculation is happening. And that yellow box you can see right now is the calculation surface. If you click this green room, you will say that this is an office. You can change it to any room you like. For example, if it's a school, you can change it as a school. And every room has different requirements. So for now, if we choose office, then another tab is here. You scroll down and you will see that it is either conference room, reception desk, technical writing or drawing, or archives. So let's just select a filing, um, sorry, a writing and reading tab. And if you go to the details, you will see that it requires 500 lux and the uniformity is 0.6. And if you can see that the work, working plane is now in a default like 0.8, so it's correct. For an office, we need 0.8 or 0.75. Sometimes clients require 0.75. But in Dialux Evo, the default is 0.8. So let's just use the default. And then you can offset that... Um, calculation surface from the wall the default is zero it means the calculation surface is up to the edge of the wall and if we want to make it like 0.5 you say yes you now see that the calculation surface is now offsetted from the wall with 0.5 or 50 centi so our room is now set as an office so we can just rename it as manager's office and then let's just as retain this one this one as a uh, work complaint all right so go to the calculation objects again and then we will now again create a calculation surface on the table so select this one result on surface click it and then click on the table and then open the false color and the value chart why do you think we need this one to open it? Because sometimes the clients only requires the table's lux value, not the whole room. So in office, it is important that you achieve a 500 lux on the table itself. It is not necessarily or required to have a 500 lux on the corner or on the sofa. So that's why we created a calculation surface on the table. And again, if we want to to have another calculation surface on the wall it's also possible you just click again this one results on surface and then click the wall and then click the false color again and the value chart this is very important if you want to see the vertical illumination or the vertical lux value and then you can also edit the spacing of the number by here isoline or the value chart and you say quantity, click the quantity, and then let's say um, 10 by 6, for example, or 10 by 8. Now you increase the numbers or the quantity of the numbers. You can also increase the quantity here in the table. So select this one, go to the value chart, say quantity, and then let's say um, 10 by 5 and now the value looks like this it's a little bit smaller okay so now we found out that um, our room has 400 plus lux and so it's okay and if you can see in the vertical and on the table if you can see the pseudo color the yellow is 750 lux and the light yellow is 500 lux there will be a shadow from the laptop and also on this other side, but it's okay. 500 lux is um, achieved, so the, the luminaire selection and the calculation surface height is okay. It has been achieved.
Okay, so let's review. Now we have our calculation surface. So again, I showed it in the, in the floor. So let's go back and show our calculation surface or calculation result on the floor. So again, click the result on surface and then click on your floor and then click the false color and the valid chart. So again, you can edit the spacing of the numbers if you, if you like. So right click and now you have a complete lighting solution for an office. Later on, we will proceed with the um, calculation report. Okay, so we're done now with our calculation result. We achieved the lux level requirements and we selected the perfect luminaire for this project. So now let's proceed to the documentation. But before we go to the documentation, let's create um, view, views or pictures for this room. So just rotate your room like this and um, imagine that you are a, a photographer and you will take a photo on this room. So let's just make it like this. Get it, make it as perfect as possible like this. Okay, once you zoom and then you will go to the export and then save new view press this one and then again if you want to see that pseudo color and numbers click this tab the results overview and then again um, press the save new view okay so now you have two tabs on your views um, Every time you rotate your room, and if you want to go back to that views, just double click on that one and you will immediately go back to that views. So let's go again and create another views. For example, this one. This is perfect. Okay, or let's make it like this. Or let's rotate the, the, the door first so it will be nicer in the picture. Um, click the, the door right click and then press rotate and then just rotate it like that let's go back to the tree view manager's office and now it looks good and let's recalculate it because the result is now um, not updated all right so now the result is updated so let's create a new uh, views and then yeah i think this one is fine Let's make it aligned, all the sides, vertical and horizontal, and then zoom extent. Oh, so it's wrong. I should have not pressed that one. I should have pressed the zoom extent. Okay, again, let's do it. Make it aligned, both vertical and horizontal. Make sure your mouse is steady. So now we have this view. And then make sure it's okay see the wall is not showing properly so let's just crook it a little like this and then zoom a little and then go to the export tab again and save new view again if you unclick this one it will be gone and then you can say save new view again and if you want to do the ray tracing you can also do that say if you want to ray trace this view okay let's create a better and nicer view probably this side maybe okay i i need to create a nice view okay maybe this side is enough okay let's go back to this view you see that I just click the tab and then I go to the previous view that we have saved. Okay, I think this is fine. And if I want to ray trace it, okay, hold on, I will just properly align it. Yeah. If I want to ray trace it, just click this ray, tra ray trace tab and then extend the scroll bar to up to what kind of pixel you want. I usually use the ones, one for, uh, 1400 by 1050 pixels and then start ray tracing. 
um, 3D rendering is different from ray tracing. You can see the difference later on. What you can see right now is the ordinary rendering. But if it's a ray trace image, you can see that the glass and the window shows the, the glossy effect. Okay, it will take time. So let's just... Alright, now it's here. So you can see now that the window has the reflection. And this table, a glass table, has now a little glossiness compared to the other, this one. Okay. Later on, you will discover that the ray tracing is much better in rendering, especially if you have glossy surface and also glass uh, materials. So let's just close this one. And now we have one tab for ray trace. You can save your ray trace as a separate one. If you click this one, then you can save it somewhere. Or it will be save this one and add it to your uh, calculation report. So let's do another one. Maybe this side is okay. Okay, let's go to this tab again and press our first view. This is the view that we created and we will do a ray tracing for this one. Okay, let's just crook it a little. So the um, door side will not be seen. And let's say ray trace it again. Start ray tracing. Okay, there you go. So now we will see that the ray trace is looking better. The reflection of the luminaire on the window it can be seen right now. And that looks good. Okay, so let's close this one. Now we see we have two pieces of ray trace now here. This one and this one. Okay, so now we have collections of pictures. Um, one more. Let's go to the plan view. Zoom extend. Go to this tab. And now you can see that uh, you have an option to view also the plan view or the 2D view with the pseudo colors and the numbers. So let's just use this one also. Zoom extend. Go to the story instead to show the... Uh, to show the uh, wall also, the boundary wall. Okay, then save new view. Then we can also create a view with the pseudo color. So let's go back and click this tab. And then go to your display option and click this show false color. Then you can edit the value of the false color by, let's say, let's make this one as 100. And this, the other one is, let's make it 1,500 lux. So now you can see the difference of this the color here. Okay, I think this one is too high. Let's make it 50. Alright, so we can save this one. Save new view. And again, on the other side, let's click this one. Let's again open the pseudo color. And then we can say save new view and then it will become different from this option and with just an, with the, with just a pseudo color because here you can see that there is number while the other one doesn't have number okay let's save another views maybe from the top because most of the consultants prefer to see the lux value from the top view they are more concerned of the horizontal illumination. So let's save this one. Okay, let's just arrange it properly. Like this. Zoom a little. And then let's save new view. Again, let's remove this to the color and... Oops, I should have... Okay. Practice. Okay. And then let's remove this um, reference line because it's showing. Turn it off here. You can turn it off the reference line here. And then save new view again. So now we have two, four, six, eight, nine pieces of thumbnails of pictures which we can be used later on in our calculation report.